Hey students, um, today we are going to look at L'Hopital's rule. Today we will use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate limits of quotients. So we're headed back to limits, that very first topic that we discussed together. So L'Hopital's rule is used to evaluate limits of quotients where we have the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x, where f of x over g of x as x approaches a has an indeterminate solution such as, and we've got two options for this, zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Now, when we first encountered zero over zero in the first unit, unit one, we had to go back and simplify the problem. We had to factor, we had to FOIL, we had to simplify trig, we had to use the conjugate pair, <coughs> excuse me. All of that worked to get us to the solution but I have good news for you. We don't have to do all that this time. All right, so L'Hopital's rule. Assume that f of x and g of x are differentiable on an open interval containing a, and that f of a equals f of g, f, no, g of a, which equals zero. Um, assume that g prime of x does not equal zero, but it does exist. Basically, you can't divide by zero. That rule is still true. If that's the case, when you find the limit of that quotient, what you're allowed to do is, what are those? Those are primes. You can find the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator, and you have the result that way. It works out. You're like, what? How come you didn't tell us this before? Um, the reason why we couldn't tell you before is because you didn't know what a derivative was. You can't learn about a derivative till you know what a limit is. So it's this cycle that goes back and forth, but let's check it out. So the limit as x approaches 1 of x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. So the thing that you still need to do is check out that first value. So you're going to put 1 in for x. So 1 cubed minus 1 is 0, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So this does result in 0 over 0. Now, quick note about AP notation. I've been doing a lot of reading online. You can't call these equal because 0 over 0 is not a number. And if you're going to use the equal sign, you have to have a number. So that's not okay. You can kind of throw an arrow on there. That's a little bit better, but not an equal sign. So once you verify that you have zero over zero, that it's indeterminate, what you can do is find the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. So this becomes the limit as x approaches one. The derivative of x cubed minus one is three x squared. The derivative of x is one. Now you put the one in for x and this becomes three over one. There's your solution. It works. Now I just wanna show you that this does work algebraically and what it would look like. Um, this factors, I don't know if you remember any of these, but this is difference of cubes. So this would be x minus one. And then this is x squared plus two x. So I have to think about this plus one. That's right, all over x minus one. Now the x minus ones, those quantities would cancel out and I could put one in for the x's. So this is one, I'm goofed on a sign somewhere. All right, I goofed, I don't know if you can read that. I goofed on my uh, difference of cubes formula this morning. It's too early. This is not a two, it's really a one. All right, there we go. So now if I put the one in place of the X, I've got one squared, which is one plus one plus one, which is three. So I do get the same result if you don't mess up the formula, um, but L'Hopital saves us a lot of time, obviously. And when you see a limit problem on the AP exam, it's most likely a, this is the definition or you gotta use L'Hopital in some way. So let's look at example B. I am looking at the limit as x approaches pi over two of cosine of x. So remember that this is really the cosine of x quantity squared. That helps. Um, cosine of pi over two, and I know we're feeling a little unsure about that unit circle. So pi over two is at the top, the coordinates are zero, one. Cosine is the x coordinate. So this is really zero squared. sine of x minus one. Um, sine of pi over two is one minus one. So this is zero over zero. So it is indeterminate, which is good news. 
So now we can use L'Hopital's rule. And this isn't official notation, but I usually just leave myself a little note that, hey, I use L'Hopital at this step. So now it becomes the limit as x approaches pi over two. Cosine squared of x, you actually have a choice. You can do a product rule or a chain rule. I'm gonna go with the chain rule. So this is two cosine of x to the first power. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. In the denominator, the derivative of sine is a positive cosine and the derivative of one is zero. So that's good news. Now, um, in order for things to work, we'll have something cancel out, the cosines cancel out. So this is now the limit as x approaches pi over two of negative two sine of x. So if we look at pi over two, this is really negative sine of pi over two. We already said the sine value is one. This is negative two times one, which is negative two. All right, good job. Um, looking at letter C, if we put zero in place of the X, E to the zero is one minus one minus one. Nope, that's a zero. Good grief, I can't substitute this morning. And then in the bottom, cosine of zero is one minus one. This is also zero over zero. So indeterminate indeterminate, um, which means we can use L'Hopital. So as a reminder, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of 1 is 0. So now you got to try your 0 again. So e to the 0 is 1 minus 1. Sine of 0 is 0. Well, I've got 0 over 0. So now what do I do? You can do L'Hopital again. So one more time. The limit of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of one is zero. The derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. So in the numerator, e to the zero is one. In the denominator, cosine of zero is one. So this is negative one. The answer is negative one. Um, are there any limits as to how often, how many times you can do L'Hopital's rule? Nope. But if you find yourself keep going and going like after five or six iterations, stop and see if there's some kind of error somewhere. Two or three is more typical. If it's taking more than that, um, there's something, something kind of special going on there. So example two, use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate the limits of the form infinity over infinity. So we just chatted about infinity over infinity is also indeterminate. You want to check infinity, e to the infinity is really still just infinity. Don't use equal signs here because infinity over infinity is not a number. But this is indeterminate, so we are allowed to use L'Hopital. The derivative of x is 1. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So this becomes 1 over e to the infinity. Now, we discussed this back in limits, but we haven't chatted about it in a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. If I have e to the infinity, that's a really big number. So this is 1 over infinity. Do you remember what 1 over infinity is equal to? We say it's 0. And I don't know if you remember this discussion from limits or not, if your head was spinning from limits, but kind of on a side here. One half is a pretty small fraction. Yeah. One tenth is even smaller. One over 1,000 is smaller. One over a million is even smaller. So one over infinity is so small, we consider it zero. So it's a teeny, 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 tiny fraction. Um, so our answer to this problem is indeed zero. Good. And what else are we doing here? The limit as x approaches zero from the right. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, natural log of x over cosecant of x. Now, zero from the right. We knew that the answer was positive or negative infinity for a lot of those problems. That's not the only time that you use that notation. Um, the reason why it's appropriate here is if we're looking at natural log, this is my natural log curve. It passes through the point one zero. 
I have to say it approaches zero from the right on this side over here because there is no function on the left. It's not defined there. So we're only allowed to use the right hand side. So the numerator is negative infinity because it's going down, down, down to negative infinity. Cosecant is related to sine. Um, so it might be helpful to think of, I'm gonna work on the side here, one over sine of X. So if I'm looking at one over the sine of zero, we know that the sine of zero is zero. So this is one over zero. We treat that as infinity. So if one over infinity is zero, we treat one over zero as infinity. So back in my limit problem, there's my infinity. So this is indeed indeterminate. So what we're allowed to do now is use L'Hopital. And L'Hopital says, find the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. So the derivative of natural log, if you recall, is one over x. Make sure you're using that golden ticket and that you're practicing all those problems, all those derivatives. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. It's a long one. Um, this is kind of messy. I don't want to put the zeros in yet. So I'm going to move the x to the bottom. I'm going to put the negative in the front. Cosecant is really the reciprocal of sine. So I'm going to put sine back in the top. Cotangent is really the reciprocal of tangent. So I'm going to put tangent in the top. I want this back to my most basic trig functions. Um, and tangent is really sine over cosine. All right, we're looking something like that. So now we have to put that zero in and see what we get. So zero for sine is zero twice. And zero for x is zero times cosine of zero is one. So this is zero. Um, still indeterminate. So what did we learn in the last problem? You can find the derivative again. So this becomes um, in the numerator. I have it set up like a product rule, but remember that this is really negative sine of x quantity squared. So I'm gonna do a chain rule just so I can save on space. The limit as x approaches zero from the right, negative two sine of x to the first, the derivative of sine is cosine. Uh, the bottom is a product rule. There's no way to get around that one. So it's first, derivative of the second plus the second derivative of the first. Okay. Hoping we can do a little bit of work here without having to do the L'Hopital again. So let's put the zero in and evaluate. Um, sine of zero is zero, which is great news. Cosine of zero is one. So the top is a zero. Might be panicking a little bit. Oh no, I hope the bottom's not zero. So let's check it out. Um, if I put it in here, this is zero times zero, which is definitely zero, but cosine of zero is good news. Cosine of zero is one. Zero over one is equal to zero. Awesome. So these are a little bit different, but I like L'Hopital's rule. The form zero times infinity. Now, zero times infinity still indeterminate. I know that middle school part of you wants to say, well, anything times zero is zero. Yeah, we lied a little bit when we told you that. Um, <laughs> infinity times zero is not zero because they're both such strong forces. And this is not a very mathematical reason either. They're both strong forces who wins. Anything times zero is zero. Anything times infinity is infinity. Um, so it's not zero. But in order to use L'Hopital, it has to be a quotient. So I don't have a quotient right now. So zero times infinity is still, eh, we don't know. But you can manipulate this equation a little bit to turn it into a quotient. So I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to say the limit as x approaches zero. You can move the x to the denominator. 
when you do that, remember your exponent rules. This becomes x to the negative one. This is one of those things where every math that you've learned up until this point, you use in calculus. You use the fractions and decimals from middle school. You use all of the algebra rules. You use all of the algebra two rules. You use everything in pre-calc. You use a lot of geometry, not all of the geometry, but a lot. So my negative exponent from algebra one. Um, natural log of zero, we talked about in that last problem, but just to remind you, looks like this. So zero from the right. So this is going down to negative infinity. X to the negative one is really one over X. This is one of those function graphs that you should know as well. Looks like that. So if I approach zero from the right, zero from the right is headed up to positive infinity. Again, don't use that equal sign because it's not a real number, um, but it is indeterminate. So if it's indeterminate, we're allowed to use L'Hopital. So the derivative of natural log, we already talked about this morning, was one over x. The derivative of x to the negative one is negative x to the negative two. Don't put the zero in yet. You want to clean up your algebra. Otherwise, you'll still wind up with a big mess and zeros and infinities all over. So I'm going to take the x to the negative 2 and move it to the numerator. I'm going to take the 1 over the x, and that x actually goes in the denominator. So this is negative x squared over x. And those algebra rules, this becomes a negative x. Um, you could have subtracted exponents. That would have worked as well. You could have called this x to the negative 1. Negative 1 minus a negative 2 is really 1, however you want to get there. If you put 0 in place of the x, your answer is zero. Awesome. For example, four, infinity minus infinity. Again, somewhere you want to say, oh, it's the same thing. Infinity minus infinity is zero. Not zero. One of those infinities is larger than the other one, but you don't know which one. So infinity minus infinity could be zero. It could be positive infinity. It could be negative infinity. We don't know. So we need to get it into that indeterminate form, but let's back up before we get there. 1 over sine of x is 1 over 0, which is infinity, minus 1 over 0 is infinity, so infinity minus infinity. Question mark, we don't know what that is. We need to be able to use L'Hopital, but L'Hopital only works for quotient. Right now I have two quotients. I want one quotient, common denominators. So this is the limit as x approaches 0 of x minus sine of x all over x sine of x. And just double check, you wanna make sure you are getting that zero over zero form. So the numerator is zero, the denominator is zero, we're good. Now we can use L'Hopital. The derivative of x is one, the derivative of sine is cosine. In the bottom, I have an x sine of x. What kind of rule do we need? Product rule. So first, derivative of the second, plus the second derivative of the first. So in the numerator, cosine of zero is one, so this is one minus one. In the denominator, that's a zero, that's a one, that's a zero. So this is zero over zero. What do we have to do if we have zero over zero again? L'Hopital again, let me switch colors here. All right, so. The good news is when you find L'Hopital each time when you keep taking the derivative, terms start to drop out because they turn to zero. So that's, that's good news. The derivative of one is zero, that's gone. The derivative of negative cosine is going to be a positive sign. X cosine of X in the bottom is a product rule unfortunately. So first derivative of the second plus the second derivative of the first. That was all of this. And then at the end, the derivative of sine is cosine. Now, you can go through and combine like terms. There's a two cosine at the end, but I just want to be done with this problem. So I'm going to put the value of zero in. So sine of zero on the top is zero. This becomes zero plus one plus one. So this is zero over two. That's okay. Zero divided by two is zero. Zero is a perfectly acceptable answer. Zero over zero is not. Um, but plain old zero by itself is. All right, I think I have two more examples for you. 
These can be a little bit tricky. I'm gonna take a quick break here and then I'll come back into you example five with you. All right, and we're back, new location. Um, last two examples. If we're looking at zero to the zero, one to the infinity and infinity to the zero, again, all of these are forms where they're not a real number. Um, for any one of them, you could almost make an argument that the answer is zero or one, there's conflicting information. So they are these other indeterminate forms. For example A, there are a few extra steps. Um, if you go to look up examples like this online from another source, they might show you a little bit differently. But the way that it was shown to me was to put a Y on the other side. And it's just going to act like a placeholder right now. Uh, by the way, if we put a zero in place of this X, this would be one to the infinity, which again, we don't know what it is. So we put the Y on the left-hand side. Um, what that allows us to do is bring in a natural log. And with a limit, you can actually pull that to the front. So this is natural log of Y equals the limit as X approaches zero, natural log of one plus X to the one over X. Now, the nice thing about the natural log piece is the exponent you're allowed to move around. So instead of one over X being on the outside, you can actually move it to the front. So this natural log of y is just gonna sit there as we go through. So this is one over x, natural log of one plus x. Um, so what I'm looking at now is this is a one over zero. So this is infinity. Um, that second piece is natural log of one. Natural log of one is actually zero. So this is infinity times zero. Again, we don't know what it is. infinity times zero. Um, the way it's written up there, if I write it like this, it's actually zero over zero. And zero over zero is that indeterminate form that we can use for L'Hopital. So the left-hand side stays as, as it is. And this is L'Hopital. So there's my little notation that I use L'Hopital. So the derivative of natural log is one over whatever's inside times the derivative of what's inside, which in this case is one over one. So if we simplify this a little bit, Algebraically, this becomes one over one plus X. Now, pop that zero in for X and we get a one, but the answer is not one. Remember, the left-hand side is that natural log of Y. Well, we brought the natural log in so that we can move the exponent. Well, now we have to undo that. So don't forget to bring an E on both sides or rewrite this log into an exponential, whatever makes more sense to you. So Y is equal to E to the first. But what's e to the first? It's just e. So y is equal to e. So you have that extra step of introducing the natural log. I believe that's the case on the next one as well. x to the x. This one's a little bit nicer. If you were to put that zero in there, this looks like zero to the zero. Again, not zero, not one, not infinity. It's this crazy indeterminate form. So I'm going to introduce the y on the left-hand side. It just organizes it for me a little bit better. Um, I have seen them online where they put the E and the natural log both on the right hand side, but that's too much for my brain to handle at once. So natural log of Y is equal to the limit as X approaches zero from the right, of X to the X. This X that's the exponent I'm going to bring to the front. So this is X. Now I forgot the natural log piece, didn't I? On the right. Okay, so limit natural log of x to the x. There we go. So natural log of y. Actually, the natural log should have been up here. Now I can bring the x to the front. So this is the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. x natural log of x. If you put a 0 in for this x, this is now 0. Um, remember when natural log, it doesn't, exist at zero. So we have to approach zero from the right hand side. This is going to negative infinity. So zero negative infinity. 
Um, we don't know what they are, but I can't use L'Hopital yet. L'Hopital has to be for a quotient. So we had an example like this earlier on in this lesson where we brought that other piece to the denominator. So natural log of x over x to the negative one. Now, if I look at that zero from the right, this is a negative infinity that x to the negative one is one over x. So if I approach zero from the right, this is infinity. This is indeed indeterminate. So we are able to use L'Hopital. So the natural log of y is the limit as x approaches zero from the right. Remember, this is a L'Hopital problem now. The derivative of natural log of x is one over x. The derivative of x to the negative one is negative x to the negative two. So natural log of y, the limit as x approaches zero from the right. Um, if you remember from the previous problem, this becomes an x squared over x. I'm writing out every single step here that this is a negative x. Now, if I put zero in place of that x, I do get zero. And you're like, all right, the answer is zero. The answer is not zero. Remember, we still have this natural log of y sitting on the left. You want just y by itself. Introduce that e on both sides. So y is equal to e to the zero, and e to the zero is one. Awesome. Um, I like L'Hopital. These last two examples, eh, they're a little heavy, but the other ones I really, really do like, and they are time savers. And you just want to be prepared when you get to the AP exam. They will also have some problems where it's just that function notation, where there's just an f of x or a g of x. And you ran into that a little bit with the product and quotient and chain rules. They want to know that you really understand the process and not just the algebraic terms that are in there. So work on the practice problems. Reach out with questions and we'll help you out. Thanks.